Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. I do apologize for the noise because I've tried to wait this storm out, but when you live in Florida during hurricane season and you film outside, sometimes you get this. That's why it's super dark out there because it's later than usual for me, so I apologize about that. But I definitely wanted to get this one out to you because obviously Tesla had a huge day. We had talked about that. A couple other stocks as well uh, set up for this as well. And so, you know, big day there. Uh, let me know how you did in the comments and stuff. But, you know, obviously today is 9-11, right? So it's kind of, you know, you're happy to make money in the market, but it's also kind of a somber day, right? Because it's a day we'll never forget. I don't know if you remember where you were at on this day, but I remember getting off of work at a steel mill while we're at graveyard shifts, sitting in the University of Alabama's parking lot, sucking down coffee like I normally do right before the first class to get me going since I've been up all night. And I'm listening to this radio station, and the first tower had already been hit and i literally was either just so out of it but all i thought was going on was they were running a skit i thought it was just a made-up skit on radio and i started thinking the war of the worlds right which they did in the 60s or 70s where people thought they were being invaded by aliens right and so i didn't even think i thought that's a, i just remember thinking that's a weird skit to be running and so i get out and go inside start heading to class and i see everybody glued to the tvs and i look up there and i can see smoke coming out of the tower the first plane it hit so we still didn't know we were under attack right and so we get in class, and that's when we hear the second plane hit, and that's when they send everybody home. And I remember I got home to my apartment, and my cousin, who was my roommate, was a frat boy, and he was wasted as usual. And he's passed down the couch. He has no idea what happened. So I wake him up, you know, and, and we sit there and watch it all day long, right? And I think, if I remember right, I think the Pentagon hit right after that, and then there was the one in the field. So you just you think about all those lives lost, all those first responders who were running into those buildings, uh, God bless them, all those people in that plane. I forgot where that field was, where they probably saved who knows how many lives that day for whatever that target was going to be. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the family and friends of all those people. And what's even crazier, I remember having a conversation about a month before that with somebody. And we were talking about history because I love history. And I said, you know what? Our generation has never had a Pearl Harbor moment, right? We didn't know what that even meant. We just read about it in books hear about it from my grandparents and that was our pearl harbor moment right and so um yeah so i always think about that on this day you know put in the comments if you want to where you were at like uh on 9 11 and how you heard about it and stuff so now making the tough transition we'll go into the market let's start with something positive and if you own appreciating assets this is what inflation can do for you and this was the uh, Federal Reserve showing us uh, household net worths, and they popped up again. You can see right here, you know, big increase there. But if you just look right here, compare it to going all the way back to the early 80s, you know, what's the difference in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and everything going back? Inflation, right? So appreciating assets have been just ballooning up right here. So if you're a renter and you don't have appreciating assets, you haven't got to really enjoy that much of it. And so that's the big difference, right? Now, another thing on the negative part of things is going to be the chapter 11 bankruptcies. I'll continue to keep you updated on this, and this will continue to go up. Mark my words on that as long as they keep these rates where they're at. Even if they don't raise any more, if they keep them where they're at, you're going to see this spiking up. Obviously, we haven't seen the level since 2012, but you can see if you look to the right, what do you see in the bars? They're going up, right? Look at 2007, 8, and 9, right? Actually, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, all crescendoing up. And so we'll see... Obviously, it's going to continue with that number. There's no doubt it'll increase. Now, understand what today was all about, baby. You can see right here, you got the SPY, the QQQ, and then you got the equal weighted ETFs. And what do you notice? The SPY is almost three times what the equal weighted one is, and the Q is almost twice as much. And so this is all about tech right here, tech heavy, and all about that magnificent seven. And of course, the big one was obviously Tesla. You can see them right here. Tesla, this is early in the day, so this went, went up over 10%. Amazon went up over 3%. Netflix is green. Meta had a big day. We're going to get into that one. Uh, obviously, the only two red ones out of the Magnificent Seven were your semiconductors, and they even recovered after lunch. And but they were still red at the end of the day, but even they started to recover. They were down much more than this. And so, you know, that's what this day was all about. And what did I tell you to watch out for? And here we've been through this many times, right? This is Nicky Leaks. He's the one that allegedly gets the word from, you know, the Fed and stuff, and they feed him information. Well, we talked about that pause rally, right? And this says Fed officials are turning more cautious about raising rates too high now that inflation is finally showing signs of the rapid declines 
that they long anticipated. A rate pause in September will give the Fed more time to see if recent progress continues. And this is what I was talking about. We've been through this, I don't even know how many times now. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. And again, I've lost count on how many times we, we've heard this before about them pausing, the market wants to run up. Because remember, if they don't raise this month, which I don't think they will, then you got no meeting in October. So that's 60 days of don't have to worry about the, the Fed doing anything. We don't have to worry about it until November. Now, that's like a lifetime away. Doesn't it feel like a lifetime away? And so by then, guess what we're in? We're in fourth quarter. And fourth quarter is what? The best quarter of the year. Okay. And so just keep that in mind. So, you know, looking at the NASDAQs, talking about this, you can see really, I mean, every other index has a nice head and shoulders. This one right here, I think most people are right. I think it's negated the head and shoulders. And you're seeing this uptrend, right? This is the daily. And you can see clear as day. I mean, it's going up, down, up, down, bouncing. And so let's see, once we get through this resistance right here, if this continues to move up to hit the top of that ascending channel right there. And then switching to IWM, right, small caps. If you look at this right here, this is non-commercial futures position as far as short interest is concerned. And it's actually going back down. So they're increasing their short positions, but it just, it, it can't catch a bid, right? I mean, and the reason for this, I was thinking about this when I saw this chart right here. This is the Russell 2000 divided by the S&P 500. And you can see, Obviously, Russell 2000 not really doing that good, right? But you see what the RSI is doing on this ratio here, okay? And so, you know, looking at this right here is telling us it should catch a bid, but I'm thinking to myself, maybe the reason why this thing won't catch a bid has got to do more with the options market than anything else because what have we seen more than anything else that drives this? this is zero DT options. What is the most highly traded ETF out there? It's the SPY or SPX, whichever one you're doing, versus the IWM for sure. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And so I'm not kind of curious, like is that's what's throwing this whole thing off more than anything else because we see the market is, is ignoring the economy part of things, right? It's ignoring the rates and everything else which do affect uh, small cap companies more than anything else. That's probably why you're seeing those bankruptcies go up, not because the big companies are going bankrupt, because the smaller companies, right? And so I don't know, let me get your thoughts on that. It just dawned on me today and I thought, maybe that's what's throwing this into a wrench because you know we didn't zero DT options didn't run the market. Right, they were always around, but you know, starting like 2020 on, that's when you really had this problem. And so, I'm just curious to get your thoughts on that. Maybe that's what's holding it back more than anything else. And if you see the options market shift, and you know, a lot more call options coming in uh, for IWM, then maybe you get to finally see it start to outperform. But again, a lot of that has to do with the Magnificent Seven, right? That's what's making up you know this market rally as well. And I do know that now. Tesla. Well, what do we talk about? Setting this pennant formation, setting getting like a powder keg. If it gets over the 50, it's going to explode. Now let me show you the manipulation that took place with Tesla. And, and you know, and God bless Morgan Stanley for the manipulation and everything. But and I'll show you what I'm talking about on that. But you can see huge move. I mean 10% move up, gigantic gap up right in the morning, right here. And of course, you know, what caused this? Well, simple. It was Morgan Stanley, as we click on this right here, that's all the members. Now, they end up doing a huge price increase on their price target from 250 all the way to 400, saying, oh, look, Morgan Stanley upgrade sees 600 billion from Dojo AI Boost. Why is this pure manipulation? And don't get me wrong, I love the manipulation because I made money on it. But why is this pure manipulation? They act like they've never heard this thing before. Look at this. Exactly two years ago, almost to the day, Tesla unveils Dojo Supercomputer, world's newest, most powerful AI training machine. And that's why I keep saying people act like NVIDIA created this AI deal, whatever. We've never heard of AI. It's been around for years, right? And even way before this, what do you think algos who run the stock market and these quant funds run it off of? It's AI, right? Well, guess what else? Last month, they came out and even said, hey, this chip can handle 72 trillion operations per second. It's supposed to be a powerhouse, must claims, and all this great stuff. And you didn't see anything coming out of Morgan Stanley, right? All of a sudden, hmm, they bring it out this morning, pre-market. Now, why would they do that? And, and, and again, this is just how the game is played, right? Why didn't they do it last month when he comes out and, and reveals all that stuff? Because Tesla was in a downtrend. So it would have been a waste of an upgrade, especially an upgrade this big. Like that is a huge price target upgrade for them, right? That's why I got the market going, oh, look at this right here, right? And so it had been a total waste. So you, what do you do? You wait, it starts to move up, and it gets in this pennant, and it's sitting there getting rejected off the 50 multiple times, and you go, hey, hmm, 
I mean, do you really not think they were buying a bunch of call options and Tesla stock last week, like loading the boat for this because they knew what was going to be getting released Monday morning? Of course they did. They knew it was this powder cake just ready to explode. All they needed to do was light the fuse, right? And so, of course, I thought we were going to move up this week. I can't predict this as far as these upgrades and downgrades and all this other stuff. But, you know, that's what happened. I mean, that just shows you that the thing like Black Swan Adventure can't predict, and you can't predict these either. But you can guarantee you can always bet on greed from these companies. It's no different than what happened in August. That's why I say pay attention to this kind of stuff, right? In August, what happened? That's when you got the fish downgrade and the other day downgrades coming. Why? Because the market was coming into a weak point, so the downgrades will have way more effect, right? They will save it. And so they, they realize these downgrades and upgrades will have the most effect, okay? Now, of course, what does Tesla do? Right? What does it run off of? Options. And you can see it, boy, as soon as the call sweep started coming in, this is just a fraction of what was coming in. And let me show you how they play this right here. Look at this person right here. Whoever this whale was ends up, you know, buying, was it 4,464 contracts, right? 1.2 million. By like 2 o'clock today, I believe this person was up like 85%. So what a day's work. I think I put in this for like 785K or something. Uh, whoever was it, was it a company, or was it a person, whatever it was, they call them a whale. You know, we're up huge. But let me tell you, for those who aren't familiar with Tesla's, how, how it runs, right? Here's, here's the normal thing that happens here. Tesla, when it starts to run in the morning, it'll gap up, right? Because now, you know, what's happening here short sellers are starting to really have to cover some people get margin calls some are just covering because they realize what's happening right it goes in these you can call it a gamma squeeze or a short squeeze whatever you want to call it it starts to run up in pre-market and they know it's going to gap high right well as soon as it gaps people dump the options because you get great premium so they're up like i was up 4x on mine you know some people up 5x whatever it was so they'll dump because they know people can start taking profit right out of the gates then what they like to do because now short sellers are like oh boy this ain't good They'll reload, they'll take the profits, some of the profits, some of them do 10%, 25%, some people do it to 50% because it's, it's house money, right? And they'll buy a higher strike price option, right? So today I think it was like 270 or something what a lot of people are loading into. And they'll wait for it to consolidate, test back down, and then they'll start buying these options. And when they start doing that, what happens? Now the market makers who are selling the options, well, they're having to hedge. So they're buying the stock and the stock starts to run. Short sellers are covering at the same time. They go, oh boy, this ain't good. They're covering, right? So that's just it's just fuel being poured all day. Boom, boom. And every time you think, man, how, how, how can this thing go? Because remember, this is a mega cap stock. This ain't some, you know, Shopify or, you know, one of these other stocks like a Palantir or something. This thing is a mega cap, right? I think it was, what, an 800 billion market cap coming into the day or something. And so how many, how many mega cap stocks do you, go, you see can go up 10% double digits in one trading session? There ain't many of them. I can't name maybe one or two right now. And this thing, I can go on the chart and show you multiple times where it's done this, okay? Because it's this, this same cycle repeats, right? And so that is usually what people do, just FYI. And that's why it runs like that. It ain't like a lot of them. Uh, who was it last week? Was it Roku or somebody? Well, we showed it went up 10% and it literally dumped the whole day. And another reason people, will, especially now in this market, will sell immediately like I did is because I've seen too many reversals in this market. And I don't trust it because what is this week? It is quarterly OPEX, right? Plenty of shenanigans. It's CPI week. It's Apple data more, all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, looking at obviously where we're going and stuff. Obviously, you got this huge gap now that's sitting right here. I'm actually going to remove this bottom trend line down here, but I'm going to keep the top trend line just in case this thing starts to sell back down right here and use that as support to see if we get a bounce, which I can definitely see happening. But I also go through here and I'm like, well, where's another trend line I can see? Because I'm out, it was such a big move up, you can see absolutely this thing, you know, at least somehow come, come some kind of pullback, a lot of profits being taken because the people made a boatload of money today. I look at this and I'm like, well, I mean, there's a rejection, there's a bounce, there's a bounce, there's a bounce, there's a rejection, there's another bounce, there's another rejection. So I'm like, that's a pretty good trend line, right? So. If it comes back down, I'm going to look around 267, 266, 267 to see if we get another bounce, right? Because as I told the members, the air is thin up here, right? So you're looking at, you know, if it bounces at 267, absolutely, if people start rolling in those call sweeps and everything starts happening, you can see 279. Now, again, I cannot stress enough the shenanigans that takes place during weekly op X, okay? And the reason I say it makes sense, obviously, because this is an hourly chart. I mean, you see the MACD, you can see it's overbought. And, you know, usually you do get a pullback, especially on a 10% move in a mega cap stock. Again, it's Tesla. 
it is like I told somebody else, it's a freight train when it gets running. So, you know, be careful if you plan on trying to short this thing. Now, Meta, you know, big day for it, about three and a half percent. It's sitting in that volume gap right there. So, you know, if it does actually get over this right here and continue to run, there's your first resistance around, I think it's like 317. The next one's 323, if I'm not mistaken. Please check me on that. And when we kind of look down at the bottom here, I want to see this trend line right here to see if it gets a rejection, right? Because it respected this for a long time. It's underneath it. And so we'll see, which I think actually lines up pretty good. I think it's like $5 above it right now. We'll see if this actually gets a rejection or can we bust through this and move up to that next level. Now, Amazon, I almost had the same setup as Tesla, really, right? And you saw a huge move up today, 3 to 4% at one point in time right here. Same kind of pennant formation it has. So again, it just exploded up right here, or symmetrical triangle, whatever you, like, whatever you like to call this. And you can see, I mean, looking at this thing, because remember, you're talking all-time highs over to the left, right? So this has got good room to run to 150, but first, we obviously got to get past around 148, and then up to around 150, though it could run. And so just keep those in mind right there. Baba hanging on for dear life. And this one wasn't a China problem. This is a Baba problem because I think the CEO or something that runs its e-commerce or whatever, he resigned and, and I guess that made that a big deal or whatever. But again, it's sitting down there trying to bounce at that rising trend line. And you can see what I mean is a Baba problem, a JD problem because everything else was green, right, in China. And so it was all about they're you know doing more stimulus and trying to turn around the economy and the economy's bottomed out and i'm not sure what took place because i wasn't doing a power chain chart but when i looked at this it was basically all software stocks and especially cyber security stocks i mean they just they just ran today i didn't see any news maybe one of them come out with some great news and it uplifted the rest of them so let me know if you see that and i will say i mean a lot of the, what i call the art stocks ran hard today and now no earnings tomorrow that are even worth a dang to talk about and the only economic data I'll even think about is going to be the NFIB Business Optimism Index, which is at the top. And then if you want to pay attention to the New York Fed Treasury purchases, you know, good luck to you. So definitely, like I say, it's going to be a weird week. You're going to see some huge moves up and down, intraday reversals. I'll be stunned if we don't see that. Don't forget, VIX options expire on Wednesday. VIX expiration, as they like to call it. And so that usually sometimes frees the markets up, right? And so uh, anyway, and, and I'll have, I mean, for the members, I'm going to have that video coming out tomorrow uh, where somebody's been talking about volatility, you know, blow off tops, all kinds of stuff and things like that. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Feel free to sign up for the membership if you want to. And if anybody wonders what kind of videos I do for the members, it's stuff you can use for the rest of your life. That's what I believe in doing, right? It's not going over charts because I go over charts on here and stuff. I put charts in the Discord, but, you know, it's just one of those things where I like to put stuff that you can literally learn and you go, I can use this for the rest of my life because the market's been around for years. And it runs how it runs for years, and it's not really going to stop anytime soon. So uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to do. But anyway, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hope you got something out of it, guys. And I will see you tomorrow again. Apologize for the noise. It's not going to stop raining all night here in Florida. And so, you know, it's the best I can do right now because I'm not moving all this equipment inside, buddy. Let me tell you, not going to happen. So tomorrow, hopefully, it's a sunny, sunny day. It should be. So have a good one, guys.